tomorrow, um, Nick and I are gonna be leaving for our backcountry elk hunt here in New Mexico. And uh, it's gonna be a 10 day hunt. It's the second archery hunt in a unit that we've been wanting to hunt elk for many years and try to tag out. And I have all of my gear lined out and I thought it would just be a great time to potentially go over my entire gear list and uh, give some quick reviews on some of the gear that I'm running. As most of you guys know, and even if you don't know, uh, we're not sponsored at all. We're not given any free gear. Everything that we use, we use it because we like it or we get rid of it because we don't like it. So I'm gonna break this up into a few different categories and try to do this as smoothly as possible. And uh, hopefully you guys can get uh, something good out of this. Maybe it's some gear that you wanted to run or something you're looking into, or maybe just getting into backcountry hunting for the first time. So hope you guys enjoy this, but uh, let's go ahead and break it down. Okay, so I think the best way to go about this is I'm just going to sit down and kind of grab items from my pile of stuff here as we go. I'm going to try to categorize it as best as I can. Camp stuff, you know, backpack stuff, um, clothing items, hunting items, and just kind of go through the list and categorize it as much as I can. That way you can kind of skip through and look for certain things if you want to. But uh, let's go ahead and get it kicked off with some of my camp setup. So I have all of my camp stuff here in front of me. Um, we'll start with the shelter and go from there. So uh, as far as my shelter goes, this is the Argali Rincon two-person tent. I've been running this for two years now. And for a two-person tent, it's a true two-person tent. I, and I mean, what I mean by that is like I'm a six foot five individual. If you go to Sportsman's or Cabela's and pick up a two-person tent, I barely fit in there. This thing, two of me could fit in this tent and some of our gear. Um, as far as the insert goes, I'm running the half insert for this tent. I do have the full insert, but um, after running this on my antelope hunt, I really enjoyed it. I could have my wet stuff or boots and pack on the ground on one side and all of my sleep system on the other side so i really liked how this half insert worked out i was planning on going with just a ground tarp but after going scouting memorial weekend and getting eaten alive by bugs i didn't want to deal with that again so i'm going to go ahead and run this just to keep the bugs out so the next item on my list is the sleeping pad so this is a nemo tensor i think is how you say it uh, this is their all season pad. Um, I was running a mummy pad before and this season I kind of wanted to switch to a rectangular just to be a little more comfortable and so far I've been loving it. I've ran this on a couple trips now and it's amazing. Uh, it's a little louder than the last pad I had but I sleep with earplugs in when I'm back there anyways just to block off uh, any noise that will keep me up at night and I absolutely love this pad. It's I want to say three inches thick um, I have no issues getting a good night's sleep on it, and it's super light and compact. I mean, you can't really ask for anything better than that as a six foot five individual when you're trying to hunt the backcountry. So the next thing um, is my sleeping bag. Now I am using a Go Hunt compression sack for this, um, which is actually really nice. I like the these line locks it's kind of the same system that's used on my argali tent and so i really like that i also like that it's orange so if you ever lose it it's pretty easy to find i'm not going to pull this all the way out but this is a stone glacier uh chill cut 15 degree bag um, i ran this last year uh, during the september elk hunt and pretty much every hunt after that um, it's really great uh, it's kind of a little warm for this season right now but for me personally, it's long enough for me. It fits me extremely well. It's super comfortable. If I do get caught in a rainstorm, it's gonna dry my gear out. Um, it's not this bulky. I can compress this down extremely well, so it fits in my pack a lot better. I do have a 40 degree down bag I could run, but last year when we got hit with some rainstorms, those temperatures dropped really low, and I actually was comfortable sleeping in this bag. So being that we're going to be on a later hunt this year, I figured that this would be adequate. It may be a little too warm for this hunt, but um, I don't mind taking it out there just to be safe and you can't pass up on comfort. 
So last but not least in my sleep system, um, this is the pillow that I'm running. I'm not quite sure which brand. Oh, it looks like a Teton Sports. Teton Sports. It's a plush pillow. Um, I've ran Air Up pillows in the past. They, they're very compact. They pack down well. They're decently comfortable. But I honestly wanted something that was going to give me better sleep this season. I've been running this for a couple of weeks now and I like it much more. And it doesn't pack down as good, but it's just some of those sacrifices that you make that way that you're more comfortable when you're back there for 10 days. So that's pretty much gonna conclude it for my camp or sleep system, I should say. One thing I will add is for my Argali tent, I am using uh, trekking poles to set that up. I do have a carbon center pole from, for when I'm not wanting to use the trekking poles. Um, but since I'm going to be using those to pack in anyways, uh, that's what I'll be using to pitch my tent while we're back there. Let's go over my trekking poles. Uh, this, these are the Argali Carbon X poles. I just got these this year. I've never been the kind of guy to run trekking poles, but so far I love these. Uh, you also have the utility feature on top, and I'm running their uh, threaded stud to either run my binos or the camera off of. So gonna see how that works this year, but so far I really, really like these. Um, next up I have my med kit. I'll open this up so you guys can kind of see. Uh, this med kit I've had for years and I've kind of custom made it for what I'm running. Uh, we'll go over that in a different video because there's a lot of stuff in there, but um, pretty much all the necessities. I have my Catadin filter. This is the just the one liter squeeze filter. This thing's been absolutely amazing. You can filter water extremely fast. I'm also carrying an extra cartridge in there just so that uh, I ensure that I can filter water every day. I also have some dude wipes, an extra pack just in case um, I run out. Cleaning hands, uh, washing your body, washing your face, using the bathroom. It's always great to have extra wipes. And then I'm also running just, uh, I think it's 50 to 100 feet of paracord in there. Um, just good to have paracord just in case something happens. I always like carrying it with me. And then in the event that you get something by yourself, you can sort of process the animal a little better if you have some paracord, especially a big animal like an elk. So next up, this is kind of my toolkit. Uh, this is something that I'm probably going to change here in the next couple days. But... Uh, I have my Bino adapter from Tricer, Allen wrenches, my Go Hunt spoon. This is the threaded Argali adapter I was talking about. I have two knives. One's a folding knife with a saw and a knife, and the other one's a fixed blade. And I also have a knife sharpener. But I think I'm gonna separate some of the items in this bag into other bags, and uh, pretty much make that as my main kill kit bag. So this is my electronics bag. It has my anchored portable charger in it, some SD card readers for camo equipment, glass cleaner, uh, glass brush, uh, charging cables. I have some extra batteries for my headlamp in here. Um, I also have a flashlight and electric lighter combo. Um, and my earplugs are also in here. Um, I have this paired up with this Goal Zero Nomad 5 solar charger. Nothing crazy, something that's kind of packable, but can also get more uh, use out of my Anchor portable charger as well. Um, one thing that I'm not sure I'm going to take on this hunt is this right here, and this is a Goal Zero Lantern. It's USB chargeable. You can get about five days out of this thing if you run it on the one-sided setting, which is typically how I run it. Uh, it also has a two-sided setting, which is extremely bright, but this is just something that's nice to have in your tent when you're getting ready in the morning, packing up all your stuff. Or if you're staying up late at night listening for bugles, eating dinner, it's nice to have a little bit of light instead of lighting a campfire. Uh, this is just a, a great tool to have, but not sure I want to take that weight with me uh, yet or not. This bag right here is my toiletry bag. So in this one, I have more dude wipes. I have some lotion. Uh, mosquito repellent, toothpaste, toothbrush, and deodorant. Um, I also have some cleaning towels in there if I want to take a bath. Uh, it's nice staying clean out there. You feel fresh. You feel like you have a great start to every day. 
and you don't stink as bad. Uh, me personally, when I'm coming home to my fiance, I don't want to smell absolutely terrible when I come back from an elk hunt. And in the event that we get something, you know, we can wash ourselves down if it's an elk or especially if it's a bear, we can get that scent off of us. So always nice to have a toiletry kit with you. As far as uh, game bags go, these are just Tricer game bags. Uh, I bought these because they were on sale. They packed down pretty good. Um, I like these a lot because they're orange and then they also have a reflective material. So when you're shuttling meat, packing out, it's really easy to locate where you're hanging things and leaving things. Uh, you can also kind of use them for signal flags if you got to get uh, someone's attention, whether I'm trying to get Nick's attention or somebody else. These are just a great uh, game bag to carry with you. Um, I'm also using this. This is the Go Hunt uh, glassing pad. Uh, it's uh, been used quite a bit if you can't tell, but just one of those creature comforts that you can take back there with you when you're glassing. It allows you to stay on the glass longer because you're comfortable. And then when you're sitting back at camp, you can uh, actually sit down on the ground and have something that's a little more comfortable. I do have a full, really extremely foldable packing chair. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to take that yet or not. It's just a little bulky. Um, even though we're going to be back there for 10 days, I want to try to stay as lightweight as possible. So I'm not sure if I'm going to take that yet or not. Um, this is just a simple dry bag. It's a Cabela's brand, a little heavier than most of the ones out there. But one thing I do like about this is it's pretty heavy duty, uh, thick, thick walled material, and it fits all of my electronics and camera perfectly and closes with that. So that's all I need it for. It works great for that. Um, you can fold it down pretty good and save space. Um, it is a little heavier than most, but it's perfect for, for what I need it for. So here is my bino harness. This is the marsupial fully enclosed magnetic bino harness. Um, I'm just running some Vortex Viper HD 10x42s. I've had these for years and have had no issues with them finding animals. Um, I'm running the Vortex Crossfire HD rangefinder. Um, this thing is probably going to get replaced after this season. I do not like how hard you have to press the button on the top to range. I almost feel like it kind of makes you torque when you're ranging. Um, and also the red inside of the rangefinder just, it doesn't look great during the day. When I was antelope hunting, it just, I had issues with it. I didn't really like it. I wanted to get one before this hunt, but uh, being in thick timber, probably taking closer range shots, I'm fine with using this rangefinder through this elk hunt. Um, I'm also carrying chapstick um, in the event that I get chap lips. I have my elk calls in this front pocket. It's all of my diaphragm calls. I have Rocky Mountain calls, Phelps calls, and born and raised calls. I like a variety. I like each one has a specific sound I'm looking for, for what I'm trying to do. So I'm not gonna go into those in detail because I have like six or seven in there. Um, over here I have my wind checker and in here I have my um, headlamp and this is just a black diamond storm headlamp. Uh, like that headlamp a lot. It's got color modes, it's got a spotlight, it's got a floodlight. Battery seems to last a while and it, it, it's been a good headlamp for me. Um, and then here, of course, I have my Garmin InReach uh, Mini 2. Always need to have one of those if you're doing some crazy stuff in the backcountry. So that's gonna pretty much cover it for my gear stuff. Um, so now we're gonna go over clothing and food items and probably my pack at the very end. So uh, my clothing is probably my most technical stuff that I have going on right now and it's probably the most interesting thing that I'm going to be doing for this hunt this year. For this hunt this year I wanted to try something different. I wanted to try to run one pair of pants and one shirt for the entire duration of the hunt. I'm gonna carry a backup set with me at the truck just in case I severely tear a pair of pants or we get packed out I am absolutely covered in blood. So for my main set that I'm gonna be wearing um, this is just the Kuyu I think 125, 145 hooded merino and ballo. Um, nothing fancy there. I just really like merino shirts because they don't get stinky. And if you're wearing one shirt for 10 days, I would want to go with the merino. Uh, as far as my pants go, these are the Stone Glacier 206 pants. 
I really like these because you don't have to wear a belt with these. They're extremely durable, but also lightweight. And since I've worn them in on a few hunts, they've actually become fairly quiet. And they also have vent zippers on the inside of your thighs. And those are just absolutely phenomenal. I really love wearing those pants. Um, for my rain jacket, I'm only taking a rain jacket, not rain pants this year. This is just a Kuyu Northridge rain jacket and Verde. Super lightweight, super packable. Um, it's been treated, it, it holds off water fairly well. I mean, if you're gonna get caught in a crazy rainstorm for a long period of time, you're probably gonna get some water penetration, but it'll give me enough time to get under a tree, get under a bush and stay dry. The, the reason I'm not wearing uh, rain pants is I'm gonna be using these Kings Camo XKG Gators. Um, I've been using these on the scouting trips and have gotten caught in some rainstorms. Uh, the pants dry out fairly fast. I mean, within a matter of minutes, it seemed like. And so if I'm keeping most of the pants dry with this, tucking under a bush, using my rain jacket, I think I'll be fine. I also got soaking wet wearing those on my antelope hunt and they dried out just fine for the next day of hunting. Um, my jacket, I'm only taking one jacket out there um, just for early mornings or if we get caught in some random cold weather. This is just a Stone Glacier Grumman and the coyote color. Uh, I love this jacket because if I get really sweaty or my shirt gets a little wet from rain, this thing will dry you out. Um, I can also use this as a pillow. Super comfortable. Um, not in this, obviously. I kind of roll it up and uh, it just packs down extremely well. I do have some hard shell jackets, but I'm mainly taking this jacket because of how well it packs down. Um, socks, I'm taking, these are the, these are the crispy um, San Juan Merino socks. I have four pairs of these for the 10 day hunt. Um, I really like these, they're lightweight. I've tried a couple other brands and so far I haven't had any hot spot or blister issues with these socks and they just seem a little more durable little more comfortable and they don't get uh, hard and thin on the bottom like uh, I've had issues with with other merino socks. Um, underwear wise I'm not going to grab my underwear but um, I'm just wearing basic synthetic underwear that's breathable. I have the same four pairs for this hunt so I'll be swapping every couple of days. Um, they're Hanes brand so just something basic. I wanted to try some merino underwear for this hunt but i would never used them before so I've never had issues with these so I'm gonna go ahead and run these on this hunt this year. As far as my backup clothing I'm taking another uh, Kuyu 145 merino this one is just collared and then I also have these are the Kuyu Tiburon pants um, and Valo so I'm taking these because I like them they're extremely breathable they dry out very fast, um, super comfortable, super quiet, and I do have other solid pants I could take, but I wanted my backup pant to be a camel pant just because I'm not fully invested into the solids for hunting kind of deal. Uh, I did notice on my pronghorn hunt that I was less noticeable wearing camo versus wearing solid pants, and so I want to take those as a backup just in case, but we'll leave those at the truck. And if we have any issues or come out on a pack out, I'll have clothes available if I need them. So last but not least is my boots. Uh, they look shiny because they got treated uh, last week, but these are just the crispy altitude GTX boots. Uh, I'm on my second pair of boots. Uh, my last pair lasted me three, three years, I think, and hundreds, if not thousands of miles. Um, I was going to have those resold, but I ended up doing more damage than I would have liked. So they were irreparable because I was wearing them to work because they were so comfortable. So I decided to go ahead and get a new pair since they were on sale and uh, I've been running these for a couple hundred miles already probably. So they're well broken in. Um, I have them treated with the crispy products and Nikki wax. And then I want to say I'm running uh, super feet inserts. They're the orange uh, cushion inserts just to help with the heavy loads that we're going to be carrying on this hunt. Uh, as far as my hat goes, this is just a basic hat from Josh at 7X Designs. Uh, past couple of years, I've been running my lucky XO Mountain Gear hat that Nick got for me. 
but that hat's seen better days, so I decided to go ahead and change it to this one. If you're wondering why it's dirty, I don't wash it until the end of hunting season. So that's just from scouting trips and antelope so far. So we're just getting into it and I already have a nice little white salt crust uh, deal going on with my hat. Uh, this is the bugle tube I'm gonna be taking out there. It's the Renegade bugle tube by Phelps Game Calls. Uh, I purchased this last year after bending my older bugle tube out of frustration that we didn't get a bull. Uh, so I decided to go with this one. Um, it's been pretty great so far. It makes some, some high quality bugles, great vocals. It sounds great. Um, I like the, the quality that it's made out of, the material that it's made out of. It's very well made. I don't know how much we're going to be using it. Nick and I have talked this year and we want to try to call as little as possible, especially if the elk are calling, but it's better to have it than to not have it. So we'll be using this beagle tube on the hunt. So let's talk about some of my food items. Uh, this is one of my food bags. Um, I got to get some more air out of them before I pack them, but they are packed down pretty well. My total calorie count is around 3,800 calories. My target calories is 35. However, I put an extra 300 calories in every bag just in case I need it at the end of the day or I can stretch it out into extra days. That way if we are in there longer than we wanted or planned to be, we'll have some food available if we need it. I'm also going to have some food in my truck, but um, yeah, I have uh, the peak meals separated and vacuum sealed as well as the peak uh, strawberry granola, uh, pistachios, a pro meal bar, uh, Nature Valley peanut bars, Gushers, Mountain Ops. It's sort of like their Pedialyte stuff. I have some uh, pre-workout package, multivitamin, um, applesauce. I have Pop-Tarts and an MRE apple turnover. So lots of food in this bag. Uh, but that's more than enough calories for me. I typically only eat this much on a very strenuous day, like 15 to 20 miles. I know I'm gonna have a lot of food left over, but that's fine because if we wanna stay a little longer than 10 days, we will have the food to be able to do it. So I didn't go over these earlier. I, I figured I'd bundle them up with my, my food items. Um, I'm running, this is the Go Hunt titanium uh, mug. Uh, I'm taking this back there if I need to drink anything out of it, like my uh, Pedialyte stuff or my um, pre-workout stuff, or I could use it to eat my um, peak strawberry granola out of in the mornings. Just a separate receptacle to use if I need it. It's also super lightweight, pretty small, so I don't mind carrying it. Um, this is the jet boil that I'm going to be taking back there with me. This is just the jet boil flash. Now we're only going to take one. Nick and I are going to share this and we're both taking the fuel canisters that we need. Um, I'm only using this for dinners and a fuel canister gets you 24 boils. I only need 10 to 12 boils so one canister is going to be more than enough and if I have to I'll just eat my, my meals cold. Okay, last but not least my XO K3 4800 pack. Um, been running this for a few years now. I am running a Hydropack 3 liter bladder. I have it in my freezer right now because that's where I store it, but that is the bladder that I'm running. Um, this thing's empty right now, but I'm going to have to fill it up with all of that stuff. Um, I'm also carrying this is a Smith & Wesson uh, sidearm. We have seen uh, some mountain lion tracks coming over our own tracks as we've been hiking on trails out there, so taking that just in case. And then for the camera itself, I have this Peak Designs uh, camera holster. So that's what we use to carry our cameras when we're out there filming. Um, but that, that right there pretty much covers up all of the stuff I'll be using. It seems like a lot until you kind of break it down, especially when you pack it in your bag. It's really not a whole lot of gear, very technical stuff. This entire setup that I have right here is probably going to be something that I don't change for a pretty long time. Uh, if I had one thing I would want to change, it would possibly be my tent. I know our Gali has the Owyhee tent, but according to their specs, it's um, it's a little too small for me, so it's not long enough. I would like to run that in the future uh, if he ends up making something that's a little bigger. 
Um, but as far as the rest of my gear, there's not really much that I would change in this setup. Um, I think I could be lighter in some areas, but creature comforts are going to win. That's what's going to keep you out there for 10 days, keep grinding, and try to fill two tags. So I'm going to be packing up my bag tonight. Um, we're going to be leaving sometime tomorrow to the trailhead, and we're going to hike in and have a, hopefully a day, day and a half of scouting to try and pin some bulls down. So looking forward to it, and uh, I'll probably give you guys an update uh, after the season and uh, let you know how it went and uh, what I would change with all of my gear stuff.